What's up everybody, it's your boy Supreme Decision and today I'm actually doing like a car video. Actually, I've done that a couple times. So it's amazing. Anyway, um, I'm actually not sure if I actually should do this as a series or not, but just like I've been telling you guys before, I've watched the series um, that's on Apple TV. If you don't have it, get it. I got a free subscription with the iPhone 11. And what happens is I'm watching Defending Jacob. Now, Defending Jacob is from the eyes of the DA for the most part because they give you a in-depth look at how some of the things they do and some of their procedures and has some decent actors in it. And one of them is Captain America, Chris Evans. And, well, in this episode, I believe it's episode seven, when it first comes on, it talks about prosecutorial tactics. Now, a lot of people don't think these things are prevalent simply because we don't see them very often because I told you, the one thing the prosecution does not want is a trial. But some of the things they do if there's a trial that goes on is some of the tactics they try simply from human nature. Now, the most common one is one, they will not refer to the person on trial by their name. And a lot of people get caught up in defendant and they'll use actually adjectives to kind of infer that person has committed the crime. Or if it is a crime that is heinous, they'll use words like the gross murder, the gross negligence, and it'll be something that'll be emphasized on whatever they're on trial for. But they refuse to use the name of the person because, again, they're looking to dehumanize that person. And the reason being is because it's easier for 12 people to agree to convict a monster than it is a human being. Give you a great example of that. The George Zimmerman trial. They used the tactic that um, myself and my brothers used in our RICO trial. And the tactic was they called George Zimmerman, George, Mr. They gave him respectable euphemisms that go along with associating him with being a human being. After the trial, many of the jurors referred to him as George. George saw this, George, because George became their buddy. In our trial, we took away the ability for them to say anything about us by simply pointing out that not the state of Georgia, but John Melvin didn't do this, or John Melvin did that. Why? Because it comes to part two, or 1A. And that means we have to give them someone to blame. That's why a lot of times when you see people that are going through certain things and they're going through the trial and you're wondering why they're convicted and there's not really a lot of evidence, there was nobody else for the jury to blame. So they got somebody sitting there. They've got somebody because they got to believe that our system is just and they also have to believe that the people that are protecting these freedoms are correct. So that's why they give you a conviction when you're sitting there and generally it's not something meaning that you are guilty but they don't have anybody else to blame that's why you can't use the oh it was the one-armed man because the one-armed man isn't there people need tangibility they need something they can touch look and feel and that's one of them but part two of that is just like I spoke about the jury referring to George Zimmerman as George or Mr. Zimmerman, the prosecution looks to make a connection with the jury. This is also something you as someone that's on trial should also look to do because again, the connection, whoever they connect with the most is the one that they will side with because just like you know anybody that's an influencer, 
anybody that speaks, anybody that goes up and they stand in front of somebody because you have all these celebrities that are doing certain things and then all of a sudden, you know, you see Vin Diesel drinking Rockstar. Guess what? Rockstar just sold another 200,000 cases. Why? Because people are following the lead of Vin Diesel. You see these celebrities wearing these t-shirts. All of a sudden now you got 200,000 orders of this t-shirt. Why? Because people are looking for a connection. And again, you connect with the jury, there's a better option for you to convince 12 people, or even in some cases, six people, that whatever your story is, whatever picture you're painting, that's what they should believe. That's what they should side on. And you also have to work on other things such as appearance. One of the things that was brought forth in our trial was the fact that I did not look like a defendant. Even going in, um, one of the officers stopped me from going into the door. And he told me, he said, no, the attorneys go in on the other side. And I was like, no, I'm one of the three that's sitting up here. And the thing about it was the fact that I looked like something other than what I was being accused of. Because a lot of times what happens is we want to get caught up in the mindset, oh, I can wear whatever I want to. You can. The problem is the people looking at you are judging you, whether you like it or not. That is what's going on. And if you are the one that's on trial, they're looking at you to be whatever that other person is telling them unless you give them another option. And one of those is simply by being dressed a certain way. That's why you see women in certain trials dressed with a skirt on certain trials they're dressed with pants on certain trials they're they're looking with their hair down they don't have the teacher look and then in other trials you do see them with the teacher look and what i mean by that they look like librarians or half the time because even in the um young lady that killed her husband her trial she didn't even look like the person that was on trial because when she was arrested, she had red hair, she had all kind of crazy contacts, she was missing a bunch of teeth, but by the time she went to trial, she had long blonde hair, she had, she looked like she was from a Mormon compound somewhere. I don't know, but at the end of the day, she played a part and she went home. Now, does anybody believe the actual facts of the case? No, because a lot of the lawyering was challenging everything that the prosecution had. But this is also, these are tactics that we need to know going in. In the mastering or the master class series, I'm going to get deeper into things like this. And this is one of those means of helping you understand how to win. So next month, starting June 1st, we are going to start putting together the master class. Everybody that's not a member, you will not be even privy to what's going on in them. There will be other things just like this that I'll be putting up because I'll continue doing the free services. But just keep that in mind. Understanding these tactics. There are more. I'm going to get into them gradually. So everybody that's donating, I appreciate you guys. Today's video is brought to you by Clarence. So we also want to give a shout out to Robin. And we also want to give a shout out to Doug and KD, because KD put 50 on it. So thank you guys for watching. Keep donating. The links are in the description. Get ready to sign up for the memberships, because everything's coming. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep growing. And the merchandise will start next month. Until next time, Supreme out.